Turn with me to Psalms 119 to build a foundation of the message. Psalms 119 and we will start with verse 15 and 16. Psalms 119 verse 15 and 16. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statues. I will not forget thy word. Let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, we know we're in the last of the last days. Help us, Lord, to stand victorious in these times. Lord, everyone that has assembled themselves together this morning, Lord, who has an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of God has got to say. Lord, we rebuke every demon of a devil in hell that would try to hinder the service this morning. Lord, not nothing to attract our attentions that we have our focus on your word this morning. Help us, Lord, to be a lighthouse to others that they may see you in us and our heavenly father can be glorified and we ask it all in jesus name and the church says amen. amen you may be seated if you can if i put a title of the message this morning it would be is your head uncovered is your head uncovered the Bible teaches us and tells us in Ephesians chapter 6. He gives us a helmet of amen. He gives us the armor of God. And one of them is the helmet of salvation. Is your head uncovered? The word of God teaches us that we should spend our time thinking about him. His word. The psalmist said that he thought about or, or meditated on the precepts of God. That means that he spent a lot of time pondering and thinking on the ways of God and his instructions and his teachings. Listen what his psalms in chapter 1 and verse 3 says. And he shall be a man like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit and his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The main thing in our lives, number one, is be saved, except Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The songs that were sung this morning, let it be less about me and more about you. Lord, he can't pass the bloodline. I'm glad the anchor holds. No matter how heavy the cross gets, he'll be there to help you cover it. Amen. Did you hear me, church? Glory to God. Is your head uncovered? It is a very beneficial to think about God's Word. The more time a person spends meditating on the Word, the more he or she will reap from the Word. Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure ye meek, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that here shall be more, shall more be given. Basically, he's telling us that we will get from the Word of God what we put into it. Notice, especially the promise that the amount of thoughts and study we devote to the Word of God will determine the amount of virtue. And knowledge that will come back to us. Less in His Word, less power. More we spend in the Word of God, more power. Vine's Dictionary, the Greek word, 
Dudamus means power. It is translated virtue. And another translation of Dudamus is availability. The power of God that can be in you and me. Most people do not dig into the Word of God very deeply. As a result, they get confused about why they are not powerful Christian living victorious, victorious lives. The flesh is basically lazy. Lord, don't y'all shout me down. Woo! The flesh is basically lazy. And many people want to get something for nothing. With no effort on their part. However, that really is not the way it works. I will say again, a person will get out of the Word what he or she is willing to put into it. Amen. In these last days, the enemy is not playing. He's out to destroy you and me. Every day there's a battle rages in my mind. Well, don't look at me like that. It rages in yours if you're a child of God. Amen. Come on. But it's what we do with it. It's what, amen, we spend time in the Word of God. And I can give you all the theories. And I can give you what I think, I, amen, it will help you. But most important that will help you is that we get in the Word of God. Amen, go to God. more we spend in the Word, the more powerful we're going to be. Amen, go to God. He will instruct us in the way to go. Amen. Amen. Meditating on the Word of God. Meditating. Amen. I believe it's in Psalms 1 verse 1. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doeth he meditate day and day and night according to whispers the word meditate means to reflect or ponder amen to plan or intend in the mind to engage in the word of god the mind is a powerful thing a mind, glory to God, amen, glory to God. If you listen to other folk, amen, some people have good intentions, but amen, glory to God. You've got to understand, child of God, that's born again and washing the precious blood of Jesus, and you're on your way to heaven. The enemy's job is to stop you and me from getting there. But go to God, but we get that scripture, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. We have power. We have authority. But it's what we do with it. Get into the word of God. Did you hear me? Proverbs 4 and verse 20. My son, I tend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying. The basic idea is that if we want to do what the Word of God says, we must spend time thinking about it. Remember the old saying, practice makes perfect. We really do not expect to a man to be an expert at anything in life without a lot of practicing. Amen. We need to spend some accurate time in the Word of God. So why would we expect Christianity to be anything different? When you got that job, maybe you went to college and maybe you went two years, four years, eight years. Amen. If you're Jeffro Bodine, you might spend it 30 and 40 years. Amen. Jeff Bo, Do, Bo Dean, we talking about the Beverly Hillbillies in my nose. That no, 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 see that. Oh, we act like we ain't never seen it before. Okay, that's fine. Meditation produces 
success in our walk with Him. Meditation produces success. He told Joshua in chapter 1 and verse 8, the river of Jordan just opened up. They walked over on dry land. The priests went. Amen. Glory to God. Blowing the trumpets. They went across on dry land. Across Jordan's rivers. Amen. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, the Lord told them, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe and do accordingly to all. That is written therein. It didn't say some. It didn't say a little bit. According to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. If you want to be a success. And prosper in all your dealings. The Bible says you must meditate on the word of God. Day and night. You say, I go crazy, Brother Prude, if I had an amen, glory to God, amen. But you're not going to go crazy when you get into the Word of God. Where do I start at, Brother Prude? I always tell everybody, start in St. John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke is good. And St. John, amen. When you read St. John, go back, read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Amen. Go to God. But starting St. John, it's just, it just tells you the character of God, His love, His mercy, and His grace. And amen. Go to God. Amen. If I ask you this question and I took a survey, Amen. Go to God. How much time did you spend in the Word of God this week? That tells me it's off quiet. But we expect God to move in our lives except when something bad happens. Then we get really religious. Hello? You've got to be ready at all times. Amen. God has equipped us to stand against the wiles of the devil. His cunning devices when he comes to us through our mind. Glory to God. The mind is the battlefield. Amen. It what makes a man or woman. Amen. In the children of God. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but amen. Glory to God. I'm victorious in Jesus' name. I, I go to God. I, amen. I got more to go to heaven for than I did yesterday. I, I got a little closer today than I did yesterday. Amen. Every day you live, you get a little closer to heaven. Did you hear me? It's awful quiet this morning. Must be a lot of heads uncovered. You know, Mama used to tell guy turn back back in the time it snowed a little bit. And we get out there, Mama put a cap on our head, get that cap. Amen. That's where you lose your heat. You got to put a cap on your head. The Lord says you losing a lot. Get your helmet of salvation on. Quit having that stinking thinking. Hello. Hmm. We have to be prepared because he's not going to let us go easily. He's going to put up a fight. I'm talking about the enemy. Amen. Glory to God. So we must be on our guard. We must have the armor of God on. But amen. Get to this this morning. Amen. He said, you have your head uncovered. And so you are unprotected. And he's throwing everything he can at you. Put your helmet of salvation on. You say, well, I, Brother Pruitt, how do I do that? Get in the Word. Somebody got out to me this morning. Quit hollering. I ain't hollering. This is hollering. No! That's hollering. <laughs> A 
Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 3. Among whom also we have all, our, all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Paul warns us here that we're not to be governed by sensual nature or to be obeyed the impulse of our flesh, the thoughts of our carnal mind. Amen. We need to change our thinking process. Somebody said, Brother Paul, my mind's a mess. Are you thinking the wrong things? Never forget this. Your mind plays an important role in your victory. Your mind plays an important role in your victory. I know that it is the power of the Holy Ghost working through the Word of God that brings victory into our lives. And amen, glory to God, dealing with other churches that have one church. And, and amen, glory to God. And I said, how, why did I get myself into this situation that is just mind boggling and the Lord spoke to me plainly he says you didn't ask me I look around you talking to me Lord He said, Dwayne, you're the only one here. Who do you think I'm talking to? We get ourselves in more predicaments you ever thought we would ever get ourselves into because we didn't first go by prayer and reading what God would have done. Did you hear me? Give the Lord a great big hand. Romans 12 and verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, be, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul is saying that if we want to see God's good and perfect will proven out in our lives, if we have our minds renew, renewing God's way of thinking. Huh? I believe think on these things. Philippians 4 and 8. Think on these things. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, any power, and if there be any praise, think on on these things. Look what God has done. Bless you with a roof over your head. Coals on your back. Able to get up and walk around. Able to eat. Amen. Go to God. Have grandchildren. Have children. Amen. Go to God. Have a wife. Amen. Go to God. Or have a husband. If you got two husbands, you're wrong. You got two wives, you're wrong. Hello? Threw that in, that the children of the lecture for that one. Our, th our thoughts certainly affects our attitudes, our moods. Everything that the Lord tells us is for our good. He knows what will make us happy and what will make us miserable. 
We should take inventory on a regular basis and ask yourself, what have I been thinking about? Spending more time examining your thoughts. Come on and get a song ready. Let me say it one final time. Think about what you're thinking about. You may locate some of your problems and be on your way to freedom very quickly. How many loves to be free? You said, Brother Pruitt, I didn't get all that in. Well, we got CDs after service. We don't charge nothing. Don't charge the Word of God. Some preachers say, well, God gave me a word. How about give, give $20 to the CD? If God gave you a word, sir. He sure don't want you to sell it. Hello. Oh, glory. And amen, glory to God. I thank God for His mercy and His grace. We got five other churches and all of them's doing fine. Just got one. Amen. That glory to God. I said, Lord, help me to figure out what I need to do in this problem. Amen. I hate to think, amen, all of them was going off the hinge. I would not go crazy. I said, thank you, Lord, just one at a time, please. But, if it has not been for the Lord, if it has not been for His Word, if it has not been time for prayer, if it had not been time, glory to God, say, God, help me. And when we get in trouble, we go, well, we think is right. That's when we get in trouble. When we think, well, I think God, God gave me a head on my shoulder. He wants me to use the size of a hat rack. But he wants your head to be covered. The helmet of salvation. Amen. With love and compassion this morning. I don't know if you're here and you're lost and undone. Jesus is here to save your soul. The enemy might be attacking your mind. Say, look what you've done and you did this and you've done that. Amen. That's the trickery of the devil. If you have not repented and turned your life to Jesus, today is the day. Amen. And cover your head. Cover your head. Because your nakedness is showing. If your head ain't covered, then most likely the shield of faith is not going to be that strong. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel peace, you won't have no peace because the helmet is not stuck in there. And the sword, which is the word of God, which activates everything, the long belt of truth, the word, the written word of God that holds everything together. He tells us in Hebrews, he said, My word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It does some dividing. And take inventory of our lives. God help me. You said, Brother Poo, what will you say about my problems? God's got it. God's got it. You got to turn it over to Him. You got to get in the Word of God. Amen. I can help you all I can. I will try my best. But I amen, glory to God. The best way He's going to help you is the Word of God. 
the Word of God will change everything. Start in St. John. Oh, my goodness. John, Lord, have mercy. When his disciples and apostles and amen that loved him so greatly and so madly. Amen. Mm. He loves you this morning. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. God is a merciful God. And He loves you. Let's all stand. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Honey. Amen. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And no one looking around for a few minutes, please. Is Jesus knocking at the door of your life? Is Jesus knocking at the door of your life?